Hello, 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 hello. So, tonight's episode of Rise and Vise is not sponsored. However, if you would like to partner with us and get your show on the schedule as a sponsor, get your, your business, not your show, your business or brand on the schedule as a sponsor, feel free to reach out. We can be sponsor, you can sponsor or we can be uh, brand partners. Feel free to reach out via email. You can go on our website or send a text or a, a, a DM. So we can do it that way. Just let me know what you want to do and we appreciate it in advance. So tonight's guest is K-Fab. You guys know K-Fab is one of the baddest uh, fabricators out there. In he's out in Florida, but he is one of the baddest fabricators out in um in in this in this doing what he does. Let me say it that way. Um, a lot of people swear by going with K Fab, and if you are not following him, you must have been under a rock because. You know what? I'm going to let him come on and tell y'all. So I just seen him join. While we wait for him to join, um, if you are not following the, the YouTube link in my bio and hitting tapping that subscribe button. If you miss any of today's episode or you miss any of the past episodes, you can catch up on them on the YouTube channel. So waiting for KFAB to join and... I think I, I sent an invite. I don't know, okay, Fab, you may have to. Oh, there you are. Hey. How are you? So, I can't hear you. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you now. All right, perfect. <laughs> All right, so first I wanted to tell you, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to sit down and let us get in your business a little bit. My pleasure. <laughs> All right, so what I'll do is start off with one of my questions and then I'll get right into the fans' questions. All right, perfect. All right, so tell me how you got started being into cars. Honestly, it was my father. Um, you know, I grew up, my dad was in the drag racing, drag boats. Um, you know, hot rods, and it just, it was, it was just always kind of around me in my atmosphere. So with that being said, it just kind of fell suit. You know, I, I had a lot of opportunities that go different ways with different career paths, but this is, you know, my passion. This is my love. So this is what I pursued. So how long have you been doing it? Well, first of all, for the people that may or may have been under a rock and don't know who KFAB is, tell, tell everybody what you do. So, um, it's just a small shop here in Florida. We specialize in uh, fabrication. I mean, we pretty much have our hands in a little bit of everything from, you know, high horsepower donks to, you know, high horsepower street cars, to side by sides, the jet skis, just pretty much anything that someone wants to make go fast and, you know, have a quality product. It's pretty much it. So if they bring, so if they bring a, 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 a dirt bike in there and want it to go fast, oh, you're going to make it go Man, I, I, I've had Banshees, Raptors, dirt bikes, jet skis, everything. Right. So, Airboats. <laughs> Airboats? Yeah, I had a customer with an airboat that uh, he had like 260 grand or 280 grand in it. Pro charged, uh, you know, pretty, pretty nasty. Made a lot of power. He races it in like the 100 foot races. Pretty cool. All, everything all like hand airbrushed pretty impressive if you go to my page you can scroll down and you can see it we did like the headers and exhaust on it so you so you pretty much to make if 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 somebody bring their they kid big wheel in there you're gonna make it go fast eh, i don't mess with the electric <laughs> 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 everything outside of that yeah i'm, I'm about it <laughs> so um speaking of making everybody else's stuff go fast are you, have you built your own something to go fast or if not, so, what is, go ahead. So, yeah, um, you know, I've got a couple of projects. I mean, I've, I've spent the last few years uh, really just focused on business. Uh, you know, I, I started KFAB the start of COVID. I was dead broke. I was homeless. 
like and my buddy brought me in the shop and he said you know use a little spot and you know i've i've ran it up since then so you know personal projects have been you know a little bit pushed to the side but i have a couple things going i've got a a little uh, race boat that I'm building, and then I have a Mercedes with a 2.9 liter Whipple on it. Mercedes? Yeah. Oh, yeah. so you're not an old school fella? I am. I am. It's just it's it's baby steps. I gotta get all those like childhood things that I always wanted. I'm working my way towards. You know what I mean? Right. So. So on the old school front, what would be your dream old school to build? 71, but uh, you know kind of against the grain hard top i'm a hard top guy why hard top versus a vert so the vert's cool because we're in florida right you know you have the top down music bumping you know enjoying the weather but man something that is ominous about like a hard top blacked out tin windows just squatted really tough because on a vert you can only go down so low with it you know what right. i mean you're limited if, unless you don't want your top to go all the way down so it's like for me, a hard top is is more my my cup of tea. Right. But don't get me wrong, I, I love a drop top. <laughs> so, you said that I want to go back just for a second. You said you started your shop at the beginning of COVID. So what? The beginning of what? It was that twenty like, twenty. Like, honestly, I'm the worst with timelines. But it was like I started like the second week of COVID. Right. Yeah. So it was like. I mean, some people say it's the worst time to start a business. Um, some people say it's the, the best time. You know, I've been pretty fortunate ever since I, you know, basically took in work. Like, I've been blessed. Like, I've got more work than, you know, I know what to do with. So I'm very fortunate on that side of it. So what did you just step out on faith? Were you working or what? How did, how did it come about? Uh, the reason I'm asking uh, all these questions is because I know it's somebody that listening that's, that might be scared to take a step, to step out on faith. Okay, so um, I don't know how nitty and gritty you want me to get it. Go ahead. But um, all right, so before KFAB, I had a shop in Palm Beach. It was called Fab Logic. And uh, at that time of my life, I was conducting myself in maybe a way I shouldn't have been. And it turned into. Uh, a little bit of a federal thing and because of that you know everything that I kind of worked towards and was doing I lost and you know from there when I hit rock bottom I kind of jumped around I worked at a couple shops and you know it's just nothing really worked worked out um, you know I feel one of the problems in South Florida is as for a fabricator or anyone that's an employee you kind of get taken advantage of you know what I mean so you know nothing was really like going my way and you know i tried opening another business with someone um the partnership just wasn't really there so i kind of fell back from that and like i was dead broke on my butt and i like literally i couldn't even feed my dog it was bad and um you know my good friend junior uh i don't know if he's on here or not but uh he owns uh, miami auto recycling you know he basically opened up his business to me and gave me a spot and you know that's I started from a little one bay spot and it just grew, 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 grew. And you know, here, here I am today. So that's like three, four years ago. Yep. So the reason I was going with that line of questioning is because uh, um, you probably don't know this, but in 2021, I quit my 16 year career at the bank and I was like, I'm sick of this. I'm just going to step out on faith. And hey, ha happiness is worth more than money sometimes. Right. Or that, or being comfortable, right? Right. So I know that there are people out there. There's somebody that's probably wants to step out on faith, but they don't know if they can. So I feel like stories like yours, people really need to hear. So in the beginning of the pandemic, you just you were you were like, I'm just gonna start. You gotta start. I, I had no other choice. I mean, really, I was rock bottom. It was like, I either do this or like, I, you know, I, I don't. So, you know, for me, you know, luckily I've kind of, I already had a background in the industry that I was jumping in. I've already had, you know, eyes on me and, you know, people that have seen my work, right? So for me, it was just establishing a location and getting the tools I needed for necessity to be able to start, you know, touching base on what you say, you know, for asking about, you know, people that are scared to take the leap of faith. Um, you know, my, my biggest advice on that would be like, 
just make sure if you're taking that step, you know, make sure that you're solid in what you're doing, that, you know, you're not on an apprentice side of it versus, you know, being on the skilled side of it. You know, you can start middle of the road, but you're going to have, you know, hiccups, you know what I mean? And you know, I'll be honest with you, like, I'm really good at the fabrication side, but I hate the business side of it. You know, I, I, I really do. Like, I, I don't want to answer. I, I'm sure people are on here are like, you never answer your phone. I don't. You know, I, I put my, my phone in my toolbox. I try to ignore it. Uh, you know, I just, to me, what people don't understand is every time I take the time to answer the phone, I'm stopping what I'm doing, right? So I'm stopping my productivity on my billable hours. And then it's like, even if it's a five-minute phone call, right? Five minutes later, you're done. Now you're wondering the next 20 minutes what I was doing, where I was at, where I put things. So it's like, you know, I, a lot of people complain that it's hard to get a hold of me, and it is. But, you know, um, I so since I was in Miami, I moved my shop up to Pompano. I actually merged my business with Hobby Shop. So now on the business side of things, you know, I, I pretty much let, you know, my partner Shannon take care of that side of it. And I just focus on what I love. Well, I'm going to tell you, like I told Mike, at some point, you're going to have to go ahead and hire you a secretary. You, you're going to have to figure it out. You're going to have to figure it out. And, and, that, and that's why for me, it was like, you know, spin my wheels and pull my hair out and, you know, have chest pains and all the other things that go along with it or align myself with someone with, you know, common interests that can complement the side that, you know, I'm lacking. So for me, it was, it was kind of a no brainer. And, you know, we, we've been in a new location, I think now for maybe three months and it took us a little bit to get up and running, you know, electrical floors, you know, all that kind of stuff moving. You know, I, I thought it would take me a week to move my shop. It took me three weeks. <laughs> so, so, you know, um, you know, I'm up and going and again, and, you know, I'm just plugging away. I mean, I'm sure that, you know, you've been following, I'm again, I'm not really big on the social media side of things. Like, uh, I just, I like doing what I do and, you know, I, I occasionally post and I share when other people post, but, um, you know, I, I've just been plugging away. I've got a lot of projects in the shop right now. I got that 71 for Next Dimension. That's a pretty wild build we're doing. Um, I got a um, Supra in here that's the twin turbo. I can do a walk around here in a little bit. I got an RX-7 that we did a 2J swap on that, you know, we're just about buttoned up. Um, you know, I got a lot of things going on. So it's like, you know, I got a team here and it, and it definitely helps, but it's still, you know, the day to day stresses and trying to manage everyone's expectations and keeping everyone happy. It's hard. You know what I mean? Especially in the service industry, you know, we work with our hands and it's like the things that we create, it's not instant, you know, it takes time and, you know, face it, there's only so many hours a day that you're able to work without burning yourself out. So it, it's, it's hard to find a medium and a happy balance to make everything work. How do what what do you how do you feel your work life balance is? Um, I feel it's been better since I've uh, you know went in a, a partnership with someone to help me with all the other stuff because before it was like I'd work all day and then I would do all the other things at night and you know I I really didn't have much of a life. Not that I have much of a life right now, but. Um, you know, it, it's definitely took some stress off my shoulders. And, you know, for me, that's, that's worth its weight in gold. All right. Do you feel like social media has been conducive in helping you grow your business or do, do, has it been, did it not make much of a difference? Honestly, um, yes and no. Uh, I'm pretty big with word of mouth. Like I get a lot of referrals. Um, you know, obviously social media helps too. Like I don't have a huge following. I think I got like 8,000 or 9,000 people that follow me, but, uh, you know, I, every day my DMS are flooded. Like, Hey, can you do this? Can you do this? And it, it sucks because I'd love to facilitate everyone, but the reality of it is I can't, you know what I mean? So, uh, unfortunately, sometimes I got to pick and choose, you know, um, but at the, the flip side of that is I'm very fortunate to be able to have that option. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So, you know, I'm, I'm thankful for everyone. What's, um, what is, uh, what's your weight like? Like, uh, to get in the shop? Yes. Honestly, it depends. Like if it's a small project, like little things, like I can facilitate it, you know, relatively quick. Right. But if it's a big build, like I, I, I've got some really big projects in the pipeline and, you know, the big builds, I'm not. I'm not really 
trying to take too much in. Uh, you know, obviously, if someone has a question and they're interested, I obviously reach out. You know, we'll see what we can do. But you know, it it's hard. It really is. Right. I you know I I feel I feel I be feeling bad for you guys because I know a lot of you and I well I guess it's kind of like a blessing and a curse, right? To be as um, talented as you are. The blessing is you're able to support yourself. You're able to be able to afford to now, 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 like you said, you couldn't feed your dog before, right? So now you can feed your dog, right? <laughs> now I got three dogs. <laughs> <laughs> but, but the curse part is it, and, and I got, and I got to kind of see it firsthand going around working with the different shops. Now that I'm doing the, that segment on my YouTube. I got to see it firsthand how it can be aggravating, right? You're trying to work and your phone is ringing, 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 ringing. And some people ain't going to just ring the phone one time. They're going to ring the phone and ring the phone and ring the phone and ring the phone. And you don't have nobody to answer it. You're trying to do your work and it's, it, can be, it can be very aggravating, right? So that in that part of it, I feel bad for you. But then the other part part the people will say but you're blessed to be able to have that that's a good problem to have right so i've been very fortunate uh don't get me wrong i've had a few set of customers that managing their expectations were full-time job right okay. um you know most of my customers are pretty respectful you know after business hours they don't really blow me off or anything during the day you know if they really need to get a hold of me for something you know i i might get one or two missed calls from them or a text but i've been fortunate in the sense that i don't have those people they're like call 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 because the reality of it is it's not going to make me pick up any faster when i get to you i get to you unfortunately right. so um you know for anyone that's listening that thinks it's a great idea i'm sure mike has touched base on this a little bit on his live it, you're, you're not doing it yourself any benefit with for that and i promise you that <laughs> Right. You know, like I said, when I was up there working with Mike, it was crazy. My it was crazy. I'm like, Mike, you gonna have to get you gonna have to get you a secretary or you're gonna have to figure something out because bro, that phone is not where it's at. Uh yeah, and uh speaking on Mike, for those that you don't know, Mike and I go back really far. Like Mike Mike's my homie, right? And uh, you know, I give him so much props because I'll be honest with you. He gets way more work done than I do. I mean, he he's in there. You know what I mean? Um, uh, my my hats off to Mike on that. Um, but yeah, it's it's definitely hard to facilitate. You know, every everyone's in a rush to get everything done. You know, and what they don't see is rushing the, these projects. It it ends up costing them in the long run because you know you don't know how many people I see they build these donks right. What's the first thing they do? They paint the body. Like, why? That's the last thing you do. You build the car complete, you test the car, you make sure the car's where you want it. Then you break it down. You do all the powder coating, all the colors, you know, and that side of it. And so many people have that wrong in this game. And unfortunately, a lot of the customers are not educated on that, right? And there's nothing wrong with that. It's just, you know, they're not car builders. They don't understand that side of it, right? So what happens is, you know, they get it painted. Now it goes to the guy that does the chassis work. Now there's cars around sparks, people walking around with tools, and it's just shop after shop. And then now they start, they have these really beautiful paint jobs, right? And then it's like, I got a scratch, I got a dent, I got this and that. And some of these paint jobs, you can't blend, you're repainting. And it's like, at the end of the day, the shops don't take responsibility for that. It's the customer that ends up, you know, having to come out of pocket. And, you know, that there's a reason why so many of these people have sour taste in their mouth, right? So I painted my car first, and I'm going to tell you why. I had to paint it. I had to get into the paint shop when I could. But since I'm going to go ahead and ceramic coat the car, so I don't have to worry about it. <laughs> it helps. But it ain't stopping the tool. I know it won't, but I'm just going to ceramic coat it. Because I had to get into that shop when I could. That shop had a, I, we'll talk about it later. But I had to get into the shop when I could. <laughs> so, as far as building, what is your favorite type of build? So, 
where I really shine is like custom turbo kits. You know, tubing work is what, you know, I'm really, really, really good at. And, you know, later on, you know, I can walk around and show you guys some examples because I'm here at the shop, obviously. Yeah. Um, so, um, you know, I, I'd love to share some things with you guys and kind of see what we have going on here as right. well. But. I think something happened. Let's see. Let's see. All right. So, y'all, I guess I think we're having technical difficulties. So, we got to get KFAB back on. Hey there. Sorry. Right. What happened? Yeah. No worries. Just right when we talked about, you know, if people don't, you know, call me off work hours, I get like four phone calls in a row. <laughs> <laughs> we jinxed it, right? <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep, yep. So, so you were saying um, that you want you where you shine was custom turbo kits. Yeah, like tubing work. You know, intercoolers, headers. Um, you know, just just turbo kits. Really, that that's my bread and butter. Out. I'm good at a lot of other things, but that's the things that like excite me and I like accelerate right. in. And it seems like you partner with a lot of other fabricators. Yeah, I mean, re the the reality of it is, is in like any community, right? Uh, the people that are at the more higher side of the community, everyone knows each other. And, you know, you have people that will kind of like try to hoard their work because they're worried that they're going to lose work. And then, you know, you have a lot of other people that will collaborate and work with other people and help other people. You know, and, you know, it, it's more than just trying to hog all the work. It's about trying to help the people around you because, you know, one day you're going to need that help as well. Right. Well, you know, they say it's a it's a um a, a saying that says many hands make light work. Right. So the more people that in your community or the more people that can help, we can we can spread the money around. Right. You can't make all sure. the money. I can't make all the money. Mike can't make all the money. Nobody can make all the money. Correct. And not for nothing. It's like, listen, if I have a circle of people that I work with, right? When I, when I have my scope of work, right? If I feel someone else is capable and it takes a load off of my back, I'd rather give it to them and help bring them up more and, you know, take that load off. So we're all kind of just helping each other, you know, cause it, it's more than just, you know, trying to, you know, grab money and run. It's, it's about, you know, making this fun. Like, this wasn't fun. I wouldn't be doing this. You know what I mean? Like, this makes me happy. So, you know, the people that are around me, if I can, you know, let's just say like wiring, right? I'm not a wiring guy. I'm an idiot with wiring. Uh, don't, don't ask me to put two wires together. I'll ruin it, right? But I have people that I work with that are the best at their industry. So why would I try to take that work on knowing that I'm not, you know, capable of it, right? I'd rather give it to someone that I know the customer is going to have a good relationship with and get a good product with it. You know, it, I, I, I really try not to, you know, I guess refer people that much, but the people that I do refer people to, they're solid, right? And, you know, I put my face on it, so. Well, that's, a th that's, that's, I think, something that you can't teach. You know, you got people out there that will never pass or try to let somebody else make some money. They want to try to act like they can make every single dollar, and that is not humanly possible. And then you got people like yourself who don't have a problem spreading the work, and you you mentioned that you and Mike were very close. He's just like that too from the time that I have known him. Because the whole time I've known him, he knows I sell car jewelry, right? So he always sending somebody to me or always like KPI, you know, I you my people, I gotta get my car jewelry from you. I gotta do you know what I'm saying? And that's that's the thing. Like, why wouldn't you? You know what I'm saying? No, for sure, for sure. Excuse me, I'm just grabbing another water. It's okay. sure it's hot in here. You okay? <laughs> so th those are things that, like, I feel like you cannot teach. It gotta either be it, it got it's gotta be in you, and it's it's sad enough 
unfortunately that, that it's a lot of people out here in not just the car world but in the world in general that feel that will try to hoard all the all the work or try to hoard, hoard all the money or make all the money you know what i'm saying then that's just yep. that's just that 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 makes no sense yep yep so i agree so um they said uh uh royal family said take them to see ghosts i'm ready for my tour whenever you are ready to start the tour if you are ready yeah yeah sure of course so uh let me flip the camera around so you can kind of see let me figure this out i don't really do these instagram lives much. it's a little arrow a yeah little i got arrow. it i got it now <laughs> so uh first off the office lights on but uh let me let me let me say hi to my new freshly adopted pup that someone dumped in Oakland Park. So say hi to Chonk. Um, so uh, we got 971 up here. Okay. Um, obviously, this is a pretty wild build. Um, this this build, you know, has a lot of really solid pieces on it, right? right. So it started off, we have a speed tech chassis underneath. Um, Originally, this chassis uh, was set up for a torque arm, uh, which is not like a stock style suspension or a four link. It's, uh, you know, a two link on the bottom and it has a, a giant arm that holds a pinion angle and goes to the back. So we ended up changing a lot of that. But uh, back to the front here. So we got this custom bell intercooler that I'm working on right now. I made all this little mount system on it. Uh, the turbos are mounted to the chassis. And it has this frame. The turbos are supported underneath. Sorry, it's kind of hard to see, but it's got mounts under here, so the turbo's fully supported. So, like, if you look, like, this stuff doesn't move at all. Yeah. So, um, you know, the headers aren't going to be the thing holding up the turbo. So, it has twin Nelson uh, 88 millimeter turbos, a giant bell intercooler, um, a Speedtech chassis, and let me walk around this quickly. And so, we modified this. I built this upper torque box set up in it it's rusty from you know just handling we're sweaty in here but it's fully adjustable and i designed this to work within the speed tech chassis and uh down here uh this is where the factory bolt hole was for the the you know lower control arm i'm actually putting boxes down here that are fully adjustable um i'd love to show you guys the rear end quickly this thing's pretty sweet so i built this custom nine inch i built this all from scratch I've got a billet table here that I build the rear ends off of. So like all of this is custom. Like it's it's not welded and they ship it to me. I, I literally make every part of this. Oh, wow. So some of the cool features are, is if you see this face plate right here, all this is machined out to take weight out of it. And this is part of the fixture for aligning the axle lens. A lot of people don't do this, but it's important. And behind this, the space plate has an O-ring groove that goes around. So when you put the third member in this, there's no uh, gasket that's needed. So it's just little trick things. But you know, I've got the uppers, they're fully adjustable. You have a lot of different room for adjustment. The lowers are fully adjustable as well. The uh, shock bar is fully adjustable. It's got a built-in anti-roll bar that ties in to the, the lower shock mounts. And then it's got this nice little X brace in here just to give it a little, you know, extra oomph. But yeah, this thing is pretty sick. So nine's got a, a really, really, really solid piece here. Right. Um, you know, I know that, you know, this is more of a donk, you know, focused thing. So we have a little bit of everything. This is actually the only donk in here right now on this side. But I got this Toyota Supra here. The owner had this painted the same color as his McLaren. Let me pop the hood on this. This is, uh, this is the money shot right here. <laughs> Twin 64 mil meter precisions oh wow so this this is you know a pretty pretty hot little setup so right now i'm working on the down pipes and the exhaust and i got to get the intercooler and all that mounted uh, over here i got this nice little buick uh stage two grand national motor it's going in this t-type this is just going to be a nice little 900 horsepower you know street car i got a RX-7 that has a 2J swap in it, which is Toyota Supra motor. Uh, let me walk over, over here. So, uh, you know, we got some different equipment. We got, you know, two different benders here. We got, you know, some abrasive sanding machines here. Got bandsaw. 
metal shear, you put the sheet metal in here that cuts it. Um, you got a break right here for bending sheet metal. I got a CNC plasma over here for cutting out brackets and whatever. You asked me about personal cars and personal projects. This is my, my, my little baby that I'm working on. It's a 05 Mercedes. It's got a little 2.9 liter whipple I'm, action going so that on. Don't look like, that don't look like the original Mercedes engine. <laughs> No, nah, this, thing, this thing's a little hooked up, you know, and, and we were talking about, you know, chassis work too, right? So this is a good friend of mine, uh, Infinite Performance. Uh, this is like a 2,400 horsepower Coyote car. Uh, I basically did all the chassis work inside this car. Uh, this is the rear boiler. It's just sitting in here right now, but so you can see a lot of bars everywhere. And, you know, we got a little bit of everything in here. Look, we even got the pool guys truck in here. <laughs> you know, you got this little, nice little Toyota, right? Right. Oh, well, the, you know, the pool guy needs to service pools quickly. We got to get him to the, you know, pool real quick. Dang. So, uh, one of the uh, people asked how much money is in Nine's car. A whole lot. <laughs> you know what, what song comes to mind? That song by <laughs> Bill. It's a whole lot of money in this. <laughs> <laughs> so let me show you guys this quickly before we walk to the other side right this is nines motor this is a nelson racing 565 that tom built custom for me so you guys might not know how big i am size wise but i've got really big hands like i'm a big guy i'm like six foot one right that's a five inch throttle body wow yeah this this thing 2500 horsepower street car right here so so let me walk over to the other side i know you guys want to see ghosts so we gotta we gotta show you know, ghost I, here i've been harassing him for years to try and get get him on my show <laughs> sonny don't like showing his I've face i've been harassing sonny let me tell you <laughs> that's great here so let me walk outside i gotta um go to my my app because I unlock it with my phone. So just okay. I I know, but still, we got still there. Yes, I'm still here. All right, my camera back on? Yes. All right, so we got some cool things on this side. So for you guys that don't recognize this car, I mean, I think this is like every 80s dope boy. Yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> car they looked up to. This is a real six-liter AMG right. Right. Uh, five, uh, 560 SEC. You know, this is a six to $800,000 car. Like, this, this thing ain't no joke. Now, the money shot here... Ooh-wee. We got Sonny's car. Yeah. The Ghost. So this thing's pretty wild. Full tube chassis. You know, this is, I don't know. Everyone talks about their race dunks, but, I mean, I think this is probably one of the wildest builds out there for sure. With the Armani Forged on it. Yep, yep. It's on the lift. Otherwise, I'd show you guys the engine. You know, we got a few other things in here. We got a... You know, Grand National, we got that, you know, 70s Detroit hair on <laughs> dealer car. <laughs> oh, look at that, man. That, that, this and thing it's is clean. Crisp. It's grandma clean. Uh-huh. Uh got the low, low on juice. You know, for you Toretto lovers, we got a 68 Charger Hemi. Pretty, pretty wild build. And these are all done at Hobby Shop, this car. Uh, the murder bird and uh, um, I don't know if you're familiar we did this build right here we did this car in 52 hours Mike was actually a part I of seen, this build seen that, that and, was crazy um, yeah and that's this thing's pretty wild so we built this car just to be able to do a, a skid uh, competition at Cletus's that's like the Australian burnout mm -hmm. cars mm -hmm. so hmm. yeah so yeah you just having a ball doing what you love. 
Isn't that what it's about? It is. It is. You know, all of us work hard. You know, we want to do the things that we love. So here we are. Now, what's your best piece of advice um, for, for someone like, like, I, I hate to keep going back to what you said, but like you, for the people that just joined and you said you started your business in the beginning of the pandemic and now look how successful you are. What's your biggest piece of advice for somebody who may not be doing as well in their business and they, they may be ready to give up? Clean business. I think that in South Florida, you do clean business, you're going to be on top quick. Right. There's so many, you know, I, I'm not here to talk bad about other shops or anything like that. Like, that's none of my business, right? How, how people want to conduct them, you know, sales with other people, that's on them. But it's clean face. You know, I can go anywhere here and, you know, I don't have problems with nobody. Right. You know, even if, we, if I don't see eye to eye with someone, there's no problems because I never play with right. people's money. Right. Yeah, I, I say that too. You know, I, I'd rather take a little bit of a loss or take a loss and keep my face clean um, because you're right. And it, it, it's not just South Florida. It's a lot of places that don't do good business. A lot of them. You know what I'm saying? Royal's clowning me right now. Yeah. <laughs> he knows how hot this shop is. <laughs> it's a lot, lot of places that don't do good business. And that's sad and unfortunate. It's so many people, and I would think, it's people like, I used to think like shops or people just kind of kind of took advantage of the people who didn't have a big following or were, were quote unquote considered themselves little people. But you would be surprised at the people that get taken advantage of with this car stuff. Yep. People with big, big huge followings. That, that is crazy. They reckless out here. They really are. Yeah, I'm luckily, luckily and fortunately, I haven't had that experience because I'm already told him, listen, by my little bit of money that I have to hustle up, I'm about to drive my car through your shop. So if you don't want that, let's just let's just keep it a let's just keep it a buck and let's just keep it above board. <laughs> so check this out. One of the unique things about us, right? Uh, and you know, this changed as I came up here because you know my backing with Hobby Shop now, right? You know, they they're well established, right? So a lot of the customer builds we have, customers sign their contract for the build, right? They don't pay a dime until it's done. So how can you get messed up? It costs a little bit more because you're using our money, right? But you have the peace of mind that you're not going to get taken advantage of. Wow. That, that's probably, that might be the first time I think I ever heard. I think that might be the first time I ever heard that. Yep. So like for me, when I had KFAB, you know, on my soul down South, right. Um, I didn't have the backing to be able to do that. Right. So I would take deposits for parts. You know, I would never take labor side up front. Um, you know, and not everyone does that. Right. But that's one thing I do like about this now is that, you know, you know, some people they're like, listen, I want to pay every week. Some people are like, I want to pay every two weeks. Some people are like, I don't want to get a bill till it's done. Run it. You know, so it's a little bit of everything, but we try to cater to the customer and what their needs are. Because, you know, for some people, it's easier for them to, you know, spend the small amounts weekly, 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 or bi-weekly, bi-weekly, right? But some people, you know, they have the money, but they've been taken advantage of so much. So what they do is, this is our budget, this is what I want, bill me at the end. Right. You know, the flip side of it is, is, you know, everyone's like, that's crazy, but it's like, the customer doesn't pay. We got a car. Right. We got our money back either way. So, you, you know what I mean? It, it's a business side to it as well. You know, um, so it, it's just about walking a medium ground and, you know, understanding your customers and their expectations and, you know, trying to provide that service to meet those expectations. And, like, let's face it, like, the car industry right now is hard. You know, they, everyone keeps on blaming COVID, 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 right? There's times where I'll order a part and they're like, yeah, we'll ship it out tomorrow. And I call them like, yo, where's this part? And they're like, oh, it's going to be four to six weeks. And it's like, now I have to go back. But this is where people mess up, right? As soon as I find that out, I let my customer know. Right. I don't keep on telling them, hey, this, this, this. Like, listen, this is where we're at. There's nothing I can do. If you can find it, great. If not, we got to wait. All right. But, you know, it's just, again, it's just keeping that open line of communication with your customers 
and you know managing expectations but do you think it would be better to go ahead and just order the parts before the car comes because i know i was talking to um i forget i forget whose shop it was but he said he have he has all the parts ordered before the car comes so there's there's a thin line on this right right and again this is not a slight to any shop or any car builder or anything like that there's different levels of cars right if you're doing a cookie cutter car where it's got a lt4 and it's got a, a 4l80 and it's got a, a quick time rear end or whatever you know what i mean that's easy you can do that but for instance like this car right how how do i know how big of an intercooler i can fit until i start building right. you know how how do i know these things i don't until i get into it so there's different levels of car building and you know on the the level where it's more of a i hate using the word cookie cutter because i feel like I'm, I'm taking away from people i'm not trying to take right. away from people right um it's just easier because you know it, it's 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 the same car you're going to use this radiator you're going to use this transmission you're going to use this converter you're going to use this you know computer you're going to use all these things so you already have your bom build material for everything that you have right. and then from that you know you're able to build the car so it it just depends on the level of the car that you're building to be able to do that you know there's things that i do like to stock um you know a lot of the tubing flanges all that stuff i do try to try to keep in stock but you know it, there's so many different turbo options how do i stock all the turbos right you know sometimes you know let's just say i'm building a class car right so a, a certain class car right they might be limited to a 76 millimeter turbo okay well the people that are running those classes and want to be competitive they're not using an off-the-shelf 76 millimeter turbo right. they're going to bullseye turbo or they're going to precision or garrett and they're getting a class purpose-built turbo and most of the time that's not a turbo that's being stocked because there's only a small amount of people that are doing it where like that super it's got a 64 66 you know i, I can make a phone call and have that thing tonight you know i it, it just it, it it depends you know what you're doing so there's different levels to it and with that they're just in scopes of what you can and can't do and what you can and can't stock right do you ever sit down and say man do you ever pat yourself on the back do you ever like dang i came from in the in 2019 2020 not having nothing and now look at me do you ever do you ever does it ever do you ever sit down and like dang dang honestly, honestly no okay i look at myself and i'm like i'm 36 i should be farther than this in life <laughs> you know like I, I just like i'm constant like for me it's growth right you know i might be good at what i do but every day i learn something new you know i might get someone in here that's new to all of this right and i might see something they do and pick up on something that i ever thought or have done before and i'm like oh okay you know so like every day i'm learning and i'm growing and i feel like the moment that you start feeling complacent like hey i did it i'm there like that growth stops and just like technology right if you're not constantly evolving with technology just for instance, you see some of these old guys that are like small block Chevy 383 with a carburetor. What's wrong with a like, 383? Yeah, Don't do that now. Part, but, but like there, there's a point, and I'm not hating, right? I'm just, I'm trying to make a point is that, you know, technology laps them and then eventually they're those old cats, those old heads, right? right. And, you know, they're not doing the re relevant things. So it's, it's a constant evolving. Like I'm trying to learn something every day. I'm trying to reevaluate the way I do things, how to do things more efficiently. Hey, what could I do differently this time to save time, get the product out faster for my customer, give them a better price and be able to do more work to be able to make more money. So it, it, there, there's just so many, you know, variables to this. And again, it's just, it's constant growth. You know, I, I try to stick with the things I'm good at because obviously time is money if i if i do something that takes me longer to do it, it's it's one of those things like i'm i'm either going to lose or the customer is going to get overcharged right and that's not fair so i rather stick at the things that i'm really strong with and again it goes back to you know um you know managing projects and saying all right i'm not the best at this i'm going to give it to this guy because he's the best at this and he's going to give me the best product and the best time so well, what i 
not necessarily what I mean by that is to look at where you came from. You know what I mean? Oh, don't get me wrong. Look, I'm very thankful. Like I, I think about it, like, you know, where I was six years ago and where I could be right now right. to where I am, like, I'm thankful, but like, I still don't give myself like that pat on the back because I'm not where I want you to. your own worst enemy. My grandma told me that she said, I am my own worst enemy. I'm going to be harder on myself than anybody in the world. For sure. And as a welder, I look at my welds and sometimes I'm like, oh, it's garbage. I'm throwing that away. I don't like that at all. <laughs> and then people are like, yo, that's clean as, you know, right. I'm trying you not to swear on your show, right? right. But, but, you know, they're like, that's clean as hell. And it's like, I'm not right. happy with it, right? right? But again, that, that's just evolving. That's me holding myself to a standard. I mean, really like fabrications almost like it's chasing um, an unattainable perfection because it, nothing will ever be perfect. And it, as, it might look perfect to a bunch of people, right? But to you doing it, it's not going to be perfect. Because I look at some of the stuff y'all do and I'm like, wow, that's amazing. That looks, I, I was looking at some of that stuff. Listen, first of all, let me just, let me give you some, give y'all some props. Because baby, when I was in there, using that using that welding machine and mike was showing me i just knew that i was about to get burnt to death that was the first thing i had almost I, my forearms look like i'm a junkie i got shit all over my arm i had, had all my safety stuff he got me the sleeves i had the i had the 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 the, the hook i had everything right and i still just knew i was about to get burnt up i knew my hair was gonna catch on fire or something so i gotta give y'all y'all props and then to look at the work and what he was just able to teach me in them couple of days that I was working with him was amazing. So I know if I was able to do that, some of those wells that he was showing me that he did and some of the ones that I see that you do, I'm like, y'all, y'all the goats. That, that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm sure Mike does as well. Y'all the goats. I, man, listen, my first, you should see my first, first, first wet. No. Yeah, my first well, it was crazy. He was like, KP, was you, what was you doing? <laughs> I, was like, <laughs> I was like, I was trying. <laughs> so, but, you know, what, what a lot of people, and you, you, you saw this firsthand and experienced it firsthand, right? What a lot of people don't realize is how taxing this really is on, on our bodies, on, yeah. you know, our eyes. brains, everything. Like, listen, like, I've got this beautiful shop, right? It's not a seed and the type of welding that, you know, Mike and I do, like, I can't leave my doors open and weld. That air will come in, it'll blow out the welding gas and it ruins the welds. So like, I'm literally sitting in here in an oven, right? And um, with that, it's like, you know, at six o'clock, you know, when I'm done with my day or whatever, like, I'm gas. I want to go home. I want to take a cold shower. I want to get my Postmates coming. I'm vegging. You know, I just, I want to. I want to hang out. I walk my dogs and I just, you know, I, I want to relax. And it's like, you know, going home, home and doing that, like, let's just say you have a significant other, right? Like, that's stressing on them because they're like, man, this guy's a bum. Like, he just wants to come home and do nothing. But it's like, you don't understand the flip side of, like, how hot it is. You know, it's like, not only are you in a hot building that's cooking, right? You're welding. It's radiating heat. And it's just like, bro, I go through, like, three or four t-shirts a day. It's bad. When I look, when I was looking through that, through that, um, the, the welding hood, I was like, Mike, I can't see nothing. He was like, KP, if you push the button, you going to see something. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, there you go right there. <laughs> so I got to really commend y'all for even first, firstly, getting into that. And secondly, sticking with it and becoming the I, cause I I can I consider y'all phenoms like the stuff y'all be do, like I, I'll tell y'all for here but I had to recently see a lot of the pictures that Mike of his work um and I was like, like shit that is nice that is that is nice I'll never be able I'll never use I'll never use some of them turbos that I seen that he welded. But they were beautiful. They they look like they should be in a museum. Yep. I mean, that's the end goal, right? We're trying to give 
not only something that's mechanically sound that will you know meet the customer's expectations of what their goals for the car is but the flip side is is it's artwork right you know i have my my certain swag the certain way i do things i have a style right and same as mike so is mike right mike has his own style and it's it's cool because it's like it's the same thing but it's so unique because so many people do it different ways and they do things, you know, differently. Like I'm weird. Like if you go through and look in the exhaust that I welded, all my welds go exactly the same way around. There's not like one weld going this way on the same weld and the other one going the other way. Everything goes circular around all the way the same, all the way down. Like I'm, I'm a weirdo with it. But again, it's, you know, I have my process and procedures in a way and I don't deviate that because I know that the way I do it, I know what my, what to expect when I'm done with it, right? So I hold myself to a standard to be able to always have the consistency to be able to do that for people. So I have one last question. When you're no longer doing this, when KFAB hangs up his welding, his fabrication stuff, uh, what do you want your legacy to be? Oh, that's a good question. I never really thought about that. I just want a clean name. You know, I want people to be like, yo, that guy was a badass. That's it. I mean, I'm I'm not really a clout chaser. I'm not I'm not here for the pat on the back. I just I want to do what I love and, you know, run across people that will allow me to have creative freedom with building the things that they want. You know, prime example, this car behind me, nine. You know, I, I helped him out with this red car, right? His red car went to four different shops. It took him like eight years, right, to even get it going. It came to me, and he's like, can you build headers for it? I'm like, no problem. And it went from headers to redoing the cold side from the Pro Charger, then it went to redoing the whole radiator stack and the whole front end of the car, then it went into do, building a rear end for it, and, like, it just spiraled out of control. But what, what sucks is when you get into a project like that, so many things are touched by different people it's hard to work around things like for me i try to save as much as i can for the customer so they're not spending 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 like i mean let's the reality about how many people have you here that go to a shop and someone did work and they're like that's garbage i'm not doing that and then they got to spend money again i try not to do that right if i can use it i will if i can't i can't right but you know the flip side of that is is when you have a fresh build and you have a relationship with a customer that trusts in you right you get something like this, right. you know what I mean? Nine's like, build it like it was right. your car. I don't care. It's your, it's your car. I said, say no more. So look what we got. We got a car with two giant turbos in the front and intercooler. There's not going to be a radiator or nothing in the front of this. I'm putting in the back of the car where the fuel tank was underneath. The fuel tanks are going in the trunks on the side. Like, it, it, there's not another donk like this, right? And again, there's different levels of this. You have show cars. You have like resto mod style donks. You have all these different, you know, cars in this culture. But you know, just like Sonny's car, right? I, I feel Sonny's car is so underrated, right? People write that car off, but they don't realize that's just a body on a complete built car. It's a custom chassis, custom everything. There's nothing on that car that's stuck. But you get other people that have a car that has a powder coated chassis and some bolt on parts and it gets all the right. love, right? And, uh, and I'm not saying that's bad, right? You know, it, there's different trends, people like different things. But for me as a builder and understanding fabrication and understanding the process of building a car, I look like a car like that I'm like, yo, how did that thing not win at Rick Ross? Like, that thing's wild. You know, it, it's a full tube chassis donk, yet it's got interior in it. It's got, you know, speakers in it. It's got everything. Like, it's a full race car. You know, that car could go, you know, it's cert I think it's certified for, like, uh, 650s or uh, 60s. I think it's 60s in the quarter, or like 240 miles per hour or some shit. And it's like, you have this crazy built. It's a supercar, basically, right? And it's like people look at it and they're like, eh to the next car and it's just like it's crazy like is it's hard for me to understand because i appreciate the the aspect of the building side of it you know right? why that is though but i say this all the time you have car guys and you have guys with cars right and sadly and unfortunately a lot of it is the guys with cars are taking over and overshadowing the car guys you get what i'm saying and girls too not not just guys girls too right and you have people that now, now people know all they got to do is build a car, right? And, and 
the, now the internet is going to watch and people are now, now all you gotta do is build a car and you got clout you know what i'm saying and that's I mean, this goes, uh, not to interrupt you Steve, but this goes back to what we were saying right like you're asking me about instagram and you know how i felt that it helped me and all that like if you look like i really like there's posts of cars and pictures if you go to my personal page like I ain't a picture of my face there ain't nothing right it's my work because that's what i'm proud of that's what i want to share with people you know i i, I prefer to keep my life private the people that i want to know things they know right i don't want to advertise my life i feel that's a that's one of the biggest things that i dislike about the culture is that it's men bragging to men trying to impress men i'm like what is this like i i don't get it like again you know to each your own i'm not trying to bad talk anyone but for me it's like i just i don't get it i really don't like it every day i think about this i see like posts and like you know i don't keep i i, I don't type things i'm not a keyboard commando like i'm not here trying to you know stir up the pot like but i, I just i sit back and i'm like this is crazy this is like a spanish soap opera for men <laughs> my own boy said uh Men back in the days, men used to build cars for for the women, like they wanted the women. They wanted to ride with a woman. Now you very rarely see. Uh, uh, there's not there's there's a, a a percentage of them that do, but the most percentage of them, the guys got a guy in the car with them, and it you know, hey, it is what it is. Hey, to each your own. Like <laughs> we, we could go so much further, but we will not. Let me ask you this. What's next for you? <laughs> you know, I I just want to continue doing what I love with the people that I enjoy. You know what I mean? Like, it's, you know, I got a pretty good team that I put together here. Um, you know, I got some really talented people. And um, I just want to continue doing what I love. Like, I try to stay out of the limelight. I try to, you know, not be a part of drama. I try to stay out of that. You know, obviously like in this industry, you get drawn into it sometimes. Right. But I always try to like, you know, brush it off as much as I can, because at the end of the day, like everyone has something to say about someone, everyone has their opinion, but the most time these people can't do anything. These people are doing right. Right. So, you know, what is it worth? It's just, and, and for me, like, I'm not on that rah, rah stuff. You know what I mean? Like I just, I come in here, I build cool shit. You know, I give my customers, you know, the products that they expect and they want, and I just keep it moving. Like, that's it. Like, I want to come in here. I want to have fun. I want to, you know, hang out with my friends when I can. Uh, you know, I, I'm big on, you know, my animals. I got three dogs. I had to put my 14-year-old my American Bulldog down last year, a week before my birthday. I told myself, no more dogs. I can't. Like, it was heart-wrenching on me, right? Right. And, um... Two weeks later, I had a Frenchie that my buddy gave me because he couldn't take care of it. And then I had a pit bull walk into my shop, and now I got a Frenchie and a pit bull. And two weeks ago, three weeks ago, Chalk, the dog that I showed you earlier, someone dumped him in Oakland Park. Wow. So, here I am, like a St. Lazaro, the dog lover over here. It's like um, you about to start a, a you about to start a dog rescue shelter. Or something. I mean, I mean. I Honestly, if I can get to where I want in life and I'm able to afford it, that is something I want to do. I mean, you know, so many people are quick to buy dogs to breed or make money on, and they don't give a shit about the animals. And this is a whole nother subject. This is a whole nother tangent, right? But, but it, it, to me, it's like, it's like people are so insensitive to that side because it's like, listen, like an animal gives you unconditional love. It doesn't care if you're broke. It doesn't care if you're rich. It doesn't care about any of that. It just wants you and it wants your love. Tell me one person in in life that doesn't have one motive or another, you know, outside of love. It's it's rare, right? So it's like I just for me it's like I don't understand it. I want to give back and be able to help rehome some of these animals and do these kind of things. Like I'm I'm you know, I'm not anywhere in life to be big on philanthropy, right? But I, I do want to do that. I do want to give back to the kids that need help. I do want to help the animals that need help. I do care about these things because, you know, at the end of the day, we get so caught up in the daily, like, money, this, 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 and we don't look at the big picture, right? So for me, it's like there's so much more to life than just this shit, too. You know what I mean? Like, my happiest moments 
are when my phone's off and I'm in the mountains. Right. I'm just climbing shit, like just being a weirdo. That's like, to me, that makes me happy. You know what I mean? And just being one with the world because like, it's just like, for instance, like, you know, South Florida, it's just so, it's, it's such a fast paced life. You know, it's, it's hustle, hustle, hustle. It's moving. It's like every day that, you know, every hour of the day, you know, you have businesses open, food open, this, like it never shuts down. Right. And then you go to somewhere like, let's just say Michigan, right? Yo, eight o'clock, they're closing that shit down. You better get home. Right. <laughs> I can't hear you. Like that slower pace of life, you know, so like, I don't see myself for being in South Florida forever. Uh, right now I'm on my hustle tip. So I'm, I'm doing my work, I'm having fun. And I'm stacking and I'm doing those things, but you know, um, yeah, I think that, you know, one day I, I just want to kind of dial it back a little bit and do some more giving back and spending time with like the people that need it. And, you know, speaking of philanthropy, um, you know, there's a saying that goes, um, if you're more fortunate than others, build a bigger table, not a taller fence. So it sounds like you actually have the heart to do that. And me, myself, I said if I probably ever became really, really rich, I probably, I definitely gonna have to get a financial person because I'm beat on gave it all away. I see so much that so many people, so many people that need like kids and all those things. And I used to be one of those people that always thought about or, or took into consideration what I did not have. Now that I'm older and when you know better, you do better. Now I, more look at what I do have versus what I don't have. Cause what I do have is way more than what I don't have. Yeah, no, for sure. And you know, like I said, it's just like, you know, there's so many people that are less fortunate and you know, it, it's crazy to see like how many people take advantage of those things and those situations, you know, and, it, and it's sad, it really is. You know, this is a whole nother subject outside of car stuff, right? There's so many things we can touch base on and talk about. But I mean, the reality of it is, is like, if you want to change things in the world and you want to do things, how do you do that? You can't do it broke. You got to make money. Yeah. So I mean, the first step to anything is making money. And, you know, people are like, money doesn't buy happiness. And I agree with that to a sense. But the flip side is, is money gives you freedom. Yeah. What is freedom? Freedom gives you the time to do the things that make you happy or to help people to make you happy or however, whatever floats your boat, right? So, um, you know, like I said before, you know, like to me, this isn't just about money. This is, this is my passion. Like I enjoy this. I live this like at 1030. I'm still here at the shop. Yeah. You know, it's my fault. So, it's my fault. The reason you're still here. <laughs> no, nah, no, nah, nah, I could have done this from my home just fine. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like I, I don't mind that, you know, I just I'm trying to get some things done here. I want to get some things done in my own personal projects too, because like, like I said, I, all my time is spent building other people's dreams. I really don't do anything for myself. So here and there, I try to reward myself by working more <laughs> on my own things. <laughs> well, sir, those were every one of my questions. Is there anything else you want to say before we get out of here? No, I mean, I think, I think that's that, you know, I, I'm just, you know, thankful that you could have me on the show and, you know, it's, it's been you know, a little bit rough here lately for me. One of my best friends, uh, he, uh, he's in kidney failure right now. And, you know, I just, I've had a lot on my plate, you know, so it's nice to just talk and, you know, kind of share experiences and, you know, what's going on and expectations and all those other things. So well, I'm sorry about your friend. We'll definitely keep him in our thoughts and prayers, but you, sir, I just want you to know, I, cause I believe in giving people their flowers while they are here to smell them. And I tell this to, to our buddy all the time as well. You, sir, are definitely a phenom in this fabrication thing. Well, I appreciate it. You know, I just consider myself an everyday Joe. I just try to build cool shit for people. You know what I mean? Definitely not an everyday Joe, but we're going to let you, we're going to let you say what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> Thank I, you so I, much. I appreciate you. Thank you so much, KP. Thanks for having me. Have on. a good night. All right. Have, have a great one. Guys, if y'all I missed any of tonight's episode of Rise and Vibes, you can catch the full replay on YouTube. You can do that by clicking the link in my bio and subscribing to the YouTube channel. We've now been doing Rise and Vibes for five years. 
uh, well, no, not quite five years. September 2nd will be year five. So if you have not seen the shows, you have plenty to catch up on. Thank you guys for tuning in to tonight's episode of Rides and Vibes. We'll see you guys next Tuesday night at 9.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for another episode of Rides and Vibes. Have a good night.